thank you for being here today, uh, and I'd like to thank Velux for arranging such a wonderful day. Um, today I'd like to present an experiment involving glare from windows and daylight that I conducted during my PhD. Um, I would also like to thank Dr. Sergio Altamonte, Robin Wilson, and Professor Peter Trugenza, all of whom cannot attend this event today. Okay. So, in the scientific literature, discomfort glare is defined as a source of distraction or annoyance caused by bright light sources or non-uniform sources within the field of vision of an observer. Um, the symptoms related to discomfort glare usually range from mild irritation to visual fatigue, and in buildings will cause frequent use of blinds or adaptive responses in order to reduce the level of discomfort that's been experienced. So in 1950, Hopkinson and Peter Bridge established that the subjective degrees of discomfort from bright light, so light, bright light sources was de dependent on four critical parameters. So these are the source luminance, of the glare source, its size, the background surrounding the glare source, and its position within the field of view. Uh, so this was later described as the glare constant formula, which was later modified into what is now known as the discomfort glare index. So, over time, um, what people found was when calculated levels of discomfort glare using these glare indices were compared against objective responses of discomfort glare, you would typically find a large scatter, so a large spread in the data, and this, this may suggest that there might be other variables other than those already embedded within the discomfort glare formula that might influence the perceived levels of discomfort. For this investigation, we investigated whether one of these effects may be an effective time of the day and sought to examine this effect under daylight conditions. So to test the hypothesis of a, an effective time, an experiment was designed in a test room with direct access to daylight. So the test took place in Nottingham from a period of March to April under mixed sky conditions. Inside the test room was a workstation equipped with a desk, a chair, and a visual display unit, so an LCD screen that was used to display visual tasks. So to prevent any unwanted head movement between the window and the, the, visual, uh, the visual task screen, after tasks were completed by participants, the desk was arranged diagonally to prevent to, to kind of prevent these, these unwanted head movements. Also inside the test room was uh, white Venetian blinds, which could be manually operated by the, by the participants. And before participants arrived to the test room, these were always adjusted so to ensure predominantly diffused daylight conditions within the workspace, uh, within the test room, sorry. So 40 participants participated in this experiment. Uh, the experimental procedure adopted a repeated measures design. Uh, so what I mean by this is that um, each participant participated to three test sessions, evenly distributed at three hour intervals um, across the day, whose order was randomized over three consecutive days. Uh, each participant also took, um, also participated in three visual tasks under two different shading settings. So the first shading setting was this default cutoff angle where the blinds were set at an angle to ensure no direct sunlight would enter into the room to ensure predominantly diffuse conditions. And the second was a user set shading where the participants can just adjust the Venetian blinds to their own visual preference. At the end of each test session, participants were also asked to give self-assessed reports of several temporal variables. So these are variables that also vary across the time of the day, but they cannot be experimentally controlled, such as fatigue, hunger, mood, etc. So when possible, all these temporal variables were measured on the same level of measurement. So as you can see uh, from this, except from caffeine intake, all the other variables were measured using seven point scales. So for this experiment, three visual tasks were used. This was a Landolt task which asked participants to um, identify gaps in the visual task with a specific orientation. Uh, the next was a letter searching task where they were asked to um, identify specific letters within the text. And the last was a typing task where they were asked to copy um, some text into a space provided onto the computer screen. Uh, all the tasks were presented on the computer screen and the order in which they were presented to each participant was randomized. 
um, to ensure no carryover, want, unwanted carryover effects were present within the experimental procedure. So that is when they repeat the same visual task on more than one occasion because they had to attend different test sessions across the time of the day, uh, pseudotext was used. So the content of the pseudotext could be randomized without necessarily deleting or adding letters in, but they also made it homogeneous enough for statistical analysis to be performed to analyze the data. After completing each visual task, um, participants were asked to give um, reports of glare using a glare sensation vote scale. Um, these were also accompanied by time span descriptors that give an indication of how, approximately how much glare you could tolerate under the given conditions. After giving a glare sensation vote, um, the photometric values of the observer were captured instantaneously using a CCD camera equipped with a fisheye lens, um, a luminance chromometer, and desk level lumens sensors recording the lumens every 10 seconds. Uh, for this experiment, the camera and the chromometer were mounted on the desk, pointed towards the LCD screen, which was assumed to be the visual fixation point of the observer, and was mounted as close as possible to the head of the participants without causing any distraction or annoyance. To ensure the photometric integrity of each um, image captured, so the seven, low, the seven low dynamic range with images with varying exposure, exposure values, um, the illuminance captured at the lens of the camera was compared against the illuminance measured using the chromometer. So the two graphs show on the left, um, your left, the default shading, and on the right, the user set shading. Across the diagonal is the plotted the null line, which corresponds to a condition where there's no difference between the luminance that falls on, this, on the camera's lens and the luminance captured by the, set, the chromometer sensor. Uh, since most of these points fall on the null line, the images captured were considered to be reliable for, for further investigation. Um, all the, all the images captured were converted into high dynamic range with uh, radiance formatting, which allowed them to be um, evaluated using EvaGlass software. So to analyze the data, um, the daylight glare probability model was used to detect an effect of time of the day on perceived levels of glare given from participants. So the daylight glare probability, or DGP, is defined as the probability that an observer would be disturbed given the a combination of the physical or photometric uh, values present in the field of view of the observer. Okay. Um, so what the graphs show is the on the y-axis the mean daylight glare probability values with 95% confidence intervals. Along the x-axis the time of the day um, with the corresponding level of glare sensation given from participants organized by the default shading, so in the white bars, or the user set shading in the shaded bars. So what you can see from the graph is under the default shading setting for every level of glare sensation vote given, uh, there appears to be increased values of mean DGP as the day progresses. However, this tendency cannot be seen under the user set shading, so once the blind participants adjust the blinds to their own setting. So, to corroborate the findings, some statistical analysis was performed. So under the default shading setting, um, the fixed effects model detects um, highly significant differences in the mean DGP values under the default shading setting for every level of glare reported. However, under the user set shading, there was no significant differences in the mean. Uh, since visual task had no significant effect on mean DGP values, this was excluded from the model to simplify it. Um, so in the analysis, a fixed effect is typically defined as something that's been experimentally manipulated, or sometimes in research, people would specify a, an independent variable as a fixed effect if they're interested in looking at central tendencies such as the mean. So after performing this analysis, uh, what we can then look at is um, something called um, estimates of covariance parameters. So what this essentially is, is a world Z statistic, which indicates um, a highly significant difference. So what this really says is the fixed effects. So for example, the time of the day, 
the default shading, the tasks, the, the, the reported level of glare, um, cannot fully explain the level of variability in the model compared to a model which has zero variance in it. So there may be other ver parameters not included within this model so far that influences the perceived level of glare given from participants. So what we can then do is take all the temporal variables. So these, to remind you, are the variables that cannot be experimentally controlled, but they also vary across the time of the day. Hence, they're, as the name suggests, they're random. So we can include them into the model to make it into a mixed effects model. So just to remind, a fixed effect is something that varies, uh, exper is experimentally manipulated. So in this example, is the time of the day. Um, so when participants um, attended more than one test session uh, across the time of the day. So they're, 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 um, the variability associated with the same person across multiple trials or the intra-individual difference can be analyzed by quantifying the within subject variability. So the graph shows on the far left um, participant number six in the morning and we can compare the variability given in DGP for the same level of glare sensation given to the midday. What random effects do on the other hand, so such as a temporal variable, is they measure an inter-individual difference, so the differences between different people. And we do this by measuring the between subject variability. So if we take the same example, um, participant six in the morning, we would measure, we can, would compare the variability in mean DGP values against uh, a different participant, so participant two. So what mixed effects modeling essentially allows us to do is partition the fixed effects, so the effects of time, the variability from time of the day, um, from the random effects, so the variability given from different people, such as the temporal variables. To um, quantify the inclusion of the random effects into the model, what we can do is use the, something called a likelihood ratio test, which essentially compares when the random effects have been included into the model, against a model which includes only the fixed effects only, so the, essentially this model here. And what the, what the inclusion of the random effects essentially tells us is that 51% of the variability is caused, unknown variability is caused in the model by the random effects, so the things that vary randomly across the time of the day. So once we control for the effects of the, r the random effects, so the variability caused by them, we can then readjust the descriptive, so the mean, st the mean statistics, and we can replot uh, re all the, the mean DGP values again. And what you can see again is under the default shading setting, uh, essentially the same thing happens. So there's an increased, um, increased mean DGP values for each level of glare sensation vote given by participants. However, contrary to the fixed effects only analysis, uh, the same effect can then see, be seen under the user set shading, so an increased mean DGPs as the day progress for each level of glare sensation vote given. However, what can also be seen is the effect under the user set shading appears to be slightly suppressed compared to the default shading. So what this might suggest is another variable under the user set shading was present that was not present under the default shading. So from the literature, what could be hypothesized is that under the user set shading, when participants typically open the blinds, they had uh, access to the view outside. So this may have suppressed or masked the effect of time of the day on perceived level of glare given by participants. Okay. So the conclusions from this experiment sh show that there, there may be a significant effect of time when evaluations are given by test, sub uh, test subjects. It also suggests that there might be a need for more sophisticated um, statistical modeling in discomfort glare research that kind of helps us identify these different sources of individual differences between different people. And also it supports the notion that physical and photometric parameters embedded in conventional glare indice formula may not be sufficient enough to predict the level of glare given from bright light sources. Uh, thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the presentation.